sondern die interessante Frage ist, die jetzt auch tiefergehend hier angesprochen worden ist, sozusagen die, die innere Motivation, wie, mit welch, vor welchem Hintergrund gehe ich eine Aufgabe an, das war die Rede davon, dass Beuys ja eigentlich aus der Wissenschaft kommt und äh, sich in die Dinge sehr vertieft hat und vor allem vor dem Hintergrund eines Konzeptes äh, gearbeitet hat und in unserem Zusammenhang ja, der Arbeitszusammenhänge mit äh, Künstlern mit besonderen Bedürfnissen, sage ich mal, spielt ja nur noch gerade da eine Frage, äh, eine zentrale Rolle, ist sozusagen, wie sind die Arbeitszusammenhänge? Wie findet man da zusammen? Wie sind die Verhältnisse? Sind die nun wieder hierarchisch, dass einer etwas vorgibt und der andere es zu tun hat? Oder gibt es andere Formen, in denen Kunst, Kunstwerke, künstlerisches Schaffen, künstlerische Prozesse initiiert werden? Und ist es dann ähnlich wie bei Beuys, der ja die Kunst auch benutzt, um zu einem tieferen Verständnis von Dingen zu kommen, ist es dann wirklich noch die Frage, dass wir immer auf ein ästhetisches Objekt abzielen müssen, was sich dann hinterher vorzeigen lässt. Ich stelle Ihnen jetzt vor, einen Freund, Lucas Santiago Mora, einen sehr, sehr besonderen Menschen, dessen Qualität ich in verschiedenen Begegnungen kennenlernen durfte, die ich sehr schätze. Ich kann eigentlich über ihn als Person nur das sagen, dass er selber Künstler ist, und zwar Fotograf und Videokünstler, und dass er sich auf eine geradezu selbst aufopfernde Art und Weise ohne Unterstützung, ohne wesentliche Strukturen, die es in Italien einfach nicht gibt, äh, dran gemacht hat an verschiedenen Orten, in der Distanz von sogar einigen hundert Kilometern, nämlich zwischen Bergamo und Reggio Emilia, an verschiedenen Orten, zum Teil stationär mit einer Kiste im Auto, äh, mit Menschen zu arbeiten, mit Jugendlichen meistens, mit äh, in, in unterschiedlichen Einschränkungen, dazu wird er dann mehr sagen, so, glaube ich, begonnen hat das Ganze in der Neu neuropsychiatrischen äh, Kinderstation oder Jugendlichen. Und ähm, das Besondere dieser Arbeit, ich habe nichts Vergleichbares gesehen, auch nicht im Resultat übrigens, was jetzt natürlich was miteinander zu tun hat, aber das Besondere ist, dass die Resultate umwerfend sind, äh, ohne dass sie eigentlich das Ziel sind. Und das ist das Besondere. Und ähm, ich habe auch nie gesehen etwas Vergleichbares, wie es ein Künstler schafft, ein, ein Energiefeld jetzt auch im Sinne von Beuys zu erzeugen, in dem eine fantastische Arbeit stattfindet. Jetzt überlasse ich dir den Rest. Gut. to tell you about the Atelier dell'Errore, that in English is Atelier of the Mistake. The Atelier dell'Errore is a visual art laboratory for child neuropsychiatry in Italy, southern Europe, so near and yet so distant, so far from here and from you. I will read my speech because my English is bad and I beg you pardon for uh, this and patience. I'm not a theorist, not even a philosopher. I'm a simple artist who, for the last 14 years, has been learning to really the world through the eyes of kids who are always a bit special, as those who have been certified by child neuropsychiatry. To offset my bad English and be faithful to my role as an artist, I've brought you many more images than words. Images that become a little window with a view from above 
on the world of our atelier. I hope you will enjoy the company of my kids and creators. Luca, stop for a moment, there's a problem with the sound. We have a terrible sound somewhere. It's okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. I know, it's not the, it's not the video, it was... Okay. I will begin with the video of Laura, called the Fairy Queen, part of a site-specific installation in a 14th century monastery in Italy, where my atelier kids have exhibited side by side with three very well-known professional artists, Berlin de Brucker, Eugenian Tuchev, and Etienne Chambaud. This is an example, a model of inclusion, which give, gives us reason to be extremely proud. Laura is the princess of our atelier. In this video, you can admire her in one of her dances to evoke the spirit of drawing. Personally, I was better able to admire her, the spontaneity and the evocative strength of this performance by stretching out on the ground. From down there, Laura appeared to me in all her power. Her dance was a new creation of the universe. Actually, when you think about it, every day, every, day, every afternoon, our, our world is recreated through the eyes of these kids. We read and recreate the world with the eyes of these special kids in the atelier. It's an ideal center of our whole project. The spinal cord of the atelier as an organism a concept where each of the kids proves to be a small, irreplaceable organ, an integral part of a whole. We, society of allegedly perfect ones, self-styled normal, should and must admit sooner or later that this daily recreation of the world is a precious gift of priceless value and we should be profoundly grateful all these kids. In this footage, the moment when Laura, still on her knees, raises her torso to get out the frame is strongly symbolic. While we are left alone, orphans on this earth, powerless and inadequate, she has gone beyond to read, to read the clouds, to interrogate the sky. Laura is now a bright star in the depth of the cosmos, to which we normals, normally, forever busy and distracted, no longer have access. She speaks to our ancestors, to stones, to trees, to sister stars. She exercises the poetic skill par excellence, looking where everyone looks but only a few see and then coming back, telling us everything in their own way. In this heavenly dynamism, rising and falling, our workshop can achieve its full potential, just as in the personal bet made with each of these kids. They may recover the elective role that is potentially their due, that of being our go-betweens, the metaxu, between earth and heaven. In this way, when art succeeds in transforming a social problem into social richness, one obtains the squaring of the circle, the highest possible result. Art as the definitive fusion of ethic and aesthetic, a fragrant blend of justice and beauty. Basically, my role as artist in the atelier, when I'm up to it and everything is working, is simply that of facilitator for so many little wandering demiurges who don't know that this is what they are. 
We have the revolution as Joseph Beuys theorized and put into practice. The artist's job is to recognize, refine, reanimate from the social isolation to which we have relegated them the new channels, the new poets, and the new prophets. On the other hand, I maintain respect for the artists who are still devoted to the art for life. As far as I'm concerned, 14 years ago, life got me cornered. Then, left me, left me, handing me just one question. Sometimes, not always, it will be too wonderful and made too easy. I might dare say that the Atelier de l'Errore is my best answer. Kids arrive at the Atelier, sent and certified by Child Neuropsychiatry of the Region Emilia and Bergamo Health Services. Personally, I'm not particularly interested in medical records. And this no offense meant to my dear neuropsychiatrist, who by now are used to this artist's license. I always like to recall, and it always helps me, that through the doors of my atelier come little unheeded wise men and women, always rather special, with a little great story to tell. And I welcome them, without giving too much weight to diagnosis and pathologies. There is no selection process to join in our atelier. The doctors send kids according to psych psychological, behavioral, social criteria. Certainly not for specific artist abilities, quite the opposite. This is a point of fact that distinguishes us from many other contemporary expressive workshops. Over time, we have made this a point of pride, our strongest point. On the other hand, we are perfectly aware that for these kids, a new defeat, a new frustration, is not admissible. So the vital and unavoidable objective remains to try always to draw out the best from each of them, their hidden value, their contribution to the narration of the world with signs, words, gestures and looks, qualities that themselves don't know of because they are buried under a hardened layering of defeat, which makes up their personal story. In the atelier we begin to draw, we began to draw, if we began to draw it was only to take up Giovanni's challenge, who 14 years ago, when asked to make a drawing, answered, no, thank you, I can't draw which is not the simple, understandable, I don't know how to draw, but the most absolute formula, the prohibition of drawing. Since then, in the atelier, we have always drawn. But if I had to find a definition of our atelier, I would not call it a drawing laboratory, but a visual narrative art laboratory. In fact, it's true, we do draw, but some of them give of their best by dancing, singing, and acting. Listening carefully to their retelling in the form of signs, designs, and words, and dances, and gestures, has shown me an esoteric opening to an archetypical unconscious, still virgin and deep. For this excavation, these findings, for their conservation and sharing, for their translation and transmission to our society of normals or normaloids, as an artist, I feel myself to be personally responsible. On the other hand, if we want to be honest with ourselves and not fall back on the do-goodism of the irritating political correct, each of these kids is a little 
loser, according to the, mechanic, the mechanics of daily life. They themselves, when they tease each other, they use the bitter definition of loser. Experience teaches me that a low common dynamic denominator exists. Experience teaches me that a low common denominator exists and encompasses all the medical record and all the motivation the medical teams give for sending them to acquire self-esteem and socialization, as known as inclusion. All these kids have a far too low self-esteem yet bit by bit going ahead side by side with them in the discovery of their imaginative and visionary qualities they reacquire trust in themselves a task that requires an immense amount of high, high quality energy a lot of commitment many challenges yet thanks to constancy to trust and to the improved quality of work, an inedited way of facing the questions grows, which quickly has found numerous admirers. With the, with the admirers came the first shows, the first book, the first public presentation. And they, the kids, oh well, to say the least, they revive. But just imagine for yourselves one of these kids arriving in class who shakes off the encumbrance of the assistant teacher, comes up to the desk and shows everyone, teachers first and foremost, a beautiful book of art, maybe like this, which tells of them, documents their work, lists their names one by one. Then he gets a taste for it and finds the courage to present himself with his book to at a literature festival, maybe in Ivrea, or a science festival in Bergamo, a contemporary art fair such as Art Verona in 2007. I remember perfectly that Sunday in October 2007 the overcrowded final day of Art Verona, in which the favorite game played with tremendous satisfaction by all the atelier kids who had come to Verona by bus, was to, pos to position themselves under their own paintings so as to observe the faces of strangers who had paid five euros to see their works. This sort of journey of personal experience, authentically gratifying, earned at high price, at the high price of the challenge with themselves in their own work is transformed into lasting value, deposited forever in the depth of their story, and which nothing and nobody can ever take away. Let it be clear, we don't do magic in the atelier, nor do shamans and gurus reside there. No one comes out of the experience, cured of their personal pathology. Rather, it's a journey that tends to put the kids in touch with their own inner resources. Resources yet to be developed, with, which has been lost. It creates the prerequisites for an interior spiritual reaction. This is the greatest contribution that art can give to neuropsychiatry. But you of the atelier, how do you recognize yourself when you are at school? That's easy. We are the ones with the assistant teacher, often outside of the classroom 
those, for example, who never get invited to birthday parties. My kids are all desperately lonely because of the depth of their problems and of their differences. But a further surprise comes when you find that the isolation they suffer also reflects on their families. They too often slide toward the emerging of social life. Because of this, we decided four years ago to set up with the parents of the atelier a charitable association with the object of getting their families together, of sharing their experience, and specifically of promoting the work done in the atelier and to repropose the same experience in other national neuropsychiatry situations. As an artist, I bear the great responsibility of making the world aware of the kids' potential and of their poetic power, the responsibility of building with them and for them a form of social redemption for their existence. We are not talking about do-gooding or pietism, but about an act of justice which gives merit to the abilities that, as an artist, I recognize and authenticate as an absolute value. Value that seeks recognition beyond the specialist of art growth or outside art, seeking rather a comparison with the world of contemporary art to put. I like to reread with an hindsight the Atelier de l'Error experience as an attempt of social sculpture, focused on the transformation of the world, or at least of its unconscious. In the atelier, we have always and only drawn animals, animals that no one has ever seen, animals which often seem ferocious and aggressive. It's only shyness or self-defense, they say, of their animals in the atelier. These animals become docile, tame, and with infinite patience, carry on their backs many transfers from the depths of their teeth of these kids' problems, taking them away, at least for a while, to the great relief of all, of all of us. We define ourselves the free university of the Atelier de l'Errore with a single department specializing in beyond zoology, iberzoology. The academic body is composed of a little master of the Atelier, while we normals are their students and auditors. In the atelier, we always work in groups. For us, too, three is the perfect number, but when things are working well, we get a group of up to six or seven kids working simultaneously. Every artwork that comes out of the atelier, even though sometimes signed, signed by a single person, is always and only a collective work. This is because every single gesture and every single mark that germinates within the atelier is always influenced by having come to light exactly there, in the place dedicated to this case. In recent times, we have systematically practiced teamwork, a sort of orchestral drawing, a symphonic work in which different kids work physically, at the same time or not, on the same picture, enriching it 
not only with touches of different styles, but also with stories, words, tales, which settle one on the top of the other in continuous transformation. The artist leading the workshop <coughs> is thus transformed into an, orco an orchestral conductor. They prefer to call him DJ. In fact, the aim is to orchestrate the sound of the players who don't even know they are making sounds, but which often are original sounds of very great value. So, slowing, slowing down the tempo of those going too fast, wanting to get it over, we did at once. At conversely speeding up, which means pushing along, incitating, stimulating those who are afraid, lack trust, having give, give up, and want to get out and quit again, as always. An example of a collective work is the dreadful iron spider of Kurnasco, symbol of our recent personal exhibition in Milan, Humans as Food, in collaboration with Max Mara and Colettina Maramorte, dedicated to the Expo team. I show you. A drawing that Niccolò refused uh, as not being up to his expectations was carried on by Nuru, who had the long legs. It was then colored by Luca and put in historical context by Nicholas, who, build, who built for this spider a house of thoughts and words. And this is the story. <coughs> the dreadful iron spider of Kurnasco by Nicholas. When it's walking about and it gets an itch, it looks for a tree, kicks it down, and uses it to scratch itself. If it kicks the tree lightly, it comes out roots and all, and ends up two or three kilometers away. One stride is 200 meters. And if it's thirsty, it can dry up a lake in a few sips. For instance, Lake Como that is big as the Garda Lake. You can imagine the damage it does. If it needs to pee, and it does it in a field, it can flood a whole city. The whole city under 40 centimeters of piss. That you, child, are in up to your knees, or adult up to your calf bone or fibula, he wrote or three-quarters of your calf bone fibula for middle-aged people. When it, re it relieves itself, it's, a, it's as big as a time. Let's say it's frightening, but disgusting too. If it's hungry, that's really worrying, because it can swallow an articulate lorry in one mouthful. It eats the whole thing and spits out the seeds and all the rubber stuff. That's all. Cool.